I've been to a lot of schools and I've seen these EV3 kits in them. I've got Spike Prime and EV3s, but a lot of schools have got the old EV3 stuff. Are they useless? Well, I don't think they are. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use them and how you should get them out of the cupboard, blow the dust off and start using them because they're still pretty awesome. And a lot of people even prefer them compared to the Spike Primes. I keep all my EV3 robots in this big tub here. In this particular tub, this is where I store things like um, all the sensors and I set them up like that so they can attach them to their robots easily. But you don't have to add those bits to it if you don't want to. I've got spare motors and things in here, medium sized motors and some spare motors and all my cables and lots of bits and pieces that get found on the floor. I don't know what to do with it so I'll chuck them in there. The other thing I've got is another tub over here that's got all the spare sensors and things I don't use. So I've got lots of touch sensors and um, other sensors in there that I don't use very often. So I've got a tub full of EV3 base models. I use them like this because I, I pretty much do the same couple of workshops over and over again and I give the kids a pre-built robot and um, they can add things to it out of those kits down there. And then we have battle bots or cup toppling challenges and things. But if you've got them in your classroom, well, building something like this is a pretty good start, actually. There's, a, there's instructions on the internet you can download pretty easily, which show you how to build the base robot for the EV3 Mindstorms. Um, and you can choose to just keep using them over and over again, or you could just use it for the first activity as a kind of an introduction. But if you're not sure how to teach using this stuff and you've never done it before, then on my website, I've made some pretty cool things that you can use. So my website's pretty easy to find. You can just type in robotman.com.au or you can Google me. Uh, if you do Robotman Robotics or something, you should be able to find me. Um, but on my website, if you click on the resources link at the top here, you can see projects and tips. In fact, there's a resources link there which might be useful to you but to start with we're going to look at projects and tips and you can scroll down and you can see i've got all my robots here you can click on lego mindstorms and then you'll see that there is a page that has a whole bunch of projects on here now i used a lot of these projects over 20 years of teaching in the classroom i use these projects i mean ev3s came out in 2014 and i used them as soon as they came out and I'm still using them today. So here's some of the projects that I've used, um, which you can click on. Some of them are remote controlled. Now, remote controlling is a bit tricky now that they've removed the Commander app from the library of uh, apps you can download from the App Store or Google Play. So you can't really get that app anymore. You used to be able to remote control them from kids' PCs with the older icon-based um, programming app. Uh, it isn't impossible to remote control them, but it's a bit trickier now. So uh, I've got a few options within some of these lessons. If it says remote control, I can, I've can i talked about how you could possibly remote control, but I recommend if you're first starting out using the coded lessons like this one, Drag Racer. And when you click on that, it shows you a little bit of an outline of the lesson and it shows you uh, an example of the old code using the icon based coding and then there's the newer word block software so the word block software was available from the app store when i made this video but in 2026 uh, in the middle of the year it's going to be discontinued so you won't be able to actually download it from tablets for tablets or you know, ipads and things so uh or actually from from the the lego website says that they're going to stop um making it available in the middle of 2026 so you either need to get a hold of it before then or, and maybe make a backup image of your tablet somewhere um, or uh, you might be able to just use a pc or computer where you can download the program because i have a feeling that people will still have it accessible i've got the installation files so i'll probably end up sticking them somewhere on my website but this is now on all my lessons for EV3. I've got word block coding examples because um, this is a lot like Scratch and it's actually a lot like the Spike Prime app, almost the same. So if the kids are used to the Spike Prime app, they'll be used to this and vice versa. Um, so there's an example there of a, of a drag racer just going flat out towards a wall and stopping when it reaches the wall. And there's a bit of teacher info there. There's a, a video that might inspire you or the kids there. 
And I've also on my website, I've got some score sheets. So you can click on score sheets and you can see that I've got ways to assess children, including a very simple spreadsheet here, which um, allows teachers to enter scores for each student based on their attitude, behavior, creativity, uh, their success in the lesson, that sort of thing. There's also very detailed rubrics here. You can download this and you can enter data based on the students, uh, individual students' uh, standards that you can actually enter whatever you like into these rows. Uh, there's a video next to each spreadsheet that shows you how I use it, even a knockout competition and things that are handy where you want to record the most amount of something like you might have a, a racetrack with a whole bunch of checkpoints you could you could keep records of how many checkpoints each students get to or whatever or you can have a multi-battle um, tournament with with a ladder so it produces a ladder and shows where people are ranked in the class or even quickest time so if you need to time something and the quickest time gets the best it ranks the children in order. So those handy spreadsheets are available for free on my website. Um, so you go to resources, you can see the resources here. It has the handy worksheets here. It also has the projects and tips here and it has some other web tools I've got here that you might find useful. Even if you don't have robots, you can tap on there and you can see um, lots of different examples of places where you might decide to do some coding or even scratch and some other things there so there's some handy resources there if you go to my resource link and you can click on projects and tips and i showed you that there are a heap of projects here already um, that are coded um, some of them are more complicated than others so if you look at sumo wrestling coded you'll see that that's quite a complicated this is the old code that i used to use and this is the more recent one with the word block coding so the examples there that will get you started at least and the kids can tweak it um, with their own values and numbers. Um, I've also shown on this particular one how to make my sumo balls. If you've been to my YouTube channel and seen all my sumo bot videos, it shows you how to make a sumo board even. So if you go back to um, the lessons here, these are all the score sheets that I showed you, but I've also got some classroom tips, especially if you're just starting out. But if you click on classroom tips, it shows you how to put kids into groups and um, and it talks about organizing the equipment and that includes labeling everything. I got to the stage when I was teaching in the classroom where I just had a big tub of Lego that I would tip out on the floor and then I'd have all the important pieces labeled and the kids would get a tub full of all the important pieces all the sensors and motors and the and the intelligent brick um, and that all be numbered and then I'd keep a record of which kids had which numbered kit and we always could find out if someone had something missing um, or if one turned up in here we could put it back where it belonged pretty easily so it's good to number things with sticky labels um, I travel around with all my Lego bricks in separate tubs but you might end up putting them all in one big tub this is a remote control section which talks about the old app and this, this is some advice on batteries and charging. So it, you can get lithium rechargeable batteries. Um, you can buy AA batteries that can be recharged. You can use them. But I recommend that these ones, if you've got them, they're very expensive to buy. They're about $100 Australian to buy uh, a battery, but the lithium batteries last for ages. They last couple of weeks worth of lessons at least and so there's some tips on the charging there and a little bit about um, the old coding method with the icon blocks this particular section talks about the three different ways you can code the EV free, EV free bricks using um, the computer based PC or Mac version or the tablet based one or even on the brick itself you can code the robot without an app which you might find handy if you get if you're having trouble getting hold of the app. There's good things about it, and you shouldn't write it off. And if you've got some in the cupboard, you should get it out because the kids will still like really really like using it. The only downsides I think with EV3 is that it's a little bit harder to construct robots with. So when they built Spike Prime, they decided to make things a lot more rectangular and more easy to stick together. Whereas the EV3s, it's a bit tricky to actually build things. But there's plenty of resources out there. If you look on the internet, you'll find heaps of websites that show you instructions and step-by-step -step 
ways of building robots and coding them using your EB3. And don't think that you have to know everything. You don't need to know everything. The kids will pick up a heap of stuff. The kids will teach you stuff. Just get it out. Give the kids an opportunity. Say, okay, we're going to do this today. We're going to build a wall bouncing racer. And here's the rules. And here's an example of the code. So let's build it and see how they go. And uh, you'll be surprised at how well they, they build it and how well things work. The main thing is you've got to keep things charged and organized and sorted out so you don't lose stuff. And once you're on top of your organization, then everything becomes a lot easier. Here's a shout out to my latest fan. Thanks, Lily, for joining and becoming a member. Just like Jeff, Joanne, Yusuf and Exile. Good on you guys. Thanks for supporting me. Check this video out. If you're into robotics, you're going to love this one.